Welcome back. You are watching DXV today. Now our next guest is a hospitality professional delivering exceptional food experiences around the world through culinary innovation. Please welcome to the show, Luigi Vespero. Did oh, I say it right? You got it right. You right. got it absolutely right. Hey, that was my first time saying it right. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank you for, for having joining me. Us. Now, 27 years in the business, mm -hmm. you started as a chef, and now you're kind of the big man on top overseeing it all. Are you a tough boss? No. Uh, no well, tell us no, what you do no. first. So I manage the FMB vertical for uh, Gargash Group. Uh, we have a number of, uh, of venues, um, you know, spread across from, you know, a cafe, our very own uh, cafe house, uh, all the way to uh, fine dining uh, venues. So we have uh, uh, the AVNG Cafe House, which is uh, a Mercedes-Benz branded uh, coffee shop. Mm -hmm. um, we have um, a, an Indian, uh, modern Indian restaurant called Farsi and uh, in Mall of Emirates. And uh, we have uh, uh, a South American and a North American restaurant called uh, um, West Lodge and um, Hotel Cartagena. And last but not least, we have uh, an Italian restaurant called uh, The Artisan, which is a DFC at the World of Astoria in DFC. And it is the best uh, octopus in the city. I will, I will stand by that uh, forever. So I have known you as a chef, I have known you as an executive chef, and now you're in this new role. I think it's interesting because the careers of chefs take different places. What prompted you to move kind of out of the kitchen and into a, a more senior role? Um, it's, uh, it's a very good question. And uh, the main reason is that, uh, you know, I won't eventually one day have my own business, right? And uh, as a chef, you're very focused on your food. You're very focused on, uh, you know, obviously delighting your guests and your customers. Uh, but you don't get exposed much to, you know, an overall business acumen, right? And this is what I wanted to, to, to learn, to be exposed so that uh, one day I can not just be a good boss, but I can also be a good uh, entrepreneur and businessman. I like that. And I know that you mentioned a lot of the restaurants earlier and I've tried a couple of them. But I want to know how do you maintain consistency across these outlets? Look, consistency is, is key in everything. Uh, you know, you need to keep consistent from the moment you answer the phone yeah. uh, at your reservation to the moment you bid farewell to your, uh, to your guest. And um, when it comes to, you know, to be consistent on the ground, it's all about training. Yeah. Training, training and more training. Um, you know, you, you things when things start to be given for granted, that's when you go back you to the You tumble and fall. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Luigi, 27 years in the business and you've done multiple different roles. I want to know your insight about how the F&B industry is changing in the UAE, how it's getting better and the most thing that points out, like sticks out to you. Um, I think, look, I've been now 11 years in, uh, in Dubai. Um, and uh, it has changed drastically and dramatically for the better, of course. Um, I think a big, a, big, uh, uh, a big factor of this growth has been um, the supply chain. You know, we had uh, you know, the, the lady from uh, Gibson earlier and, you know, when I arrived, you know, the, the, the produce and ingredients availability was very limited. Mm -hmm. Although all Dubai was already on, on the growing path, you know, on the ramp up, but it was still a bit limited. Basically, you would find the same prawns everywhere, yeah. right? But now it has changed drastically. Now you have uh, ingredients uh, uh, not only flying from many parts of the world, but fantastic ingredients being grown locally. And I think this is where uh, you know UAE has, uh, has done phenomenally well to, to deliver to fellow chefs, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know ingredients that uh, they can uh, they can work with and let them be the start of the show. Um, I always like asking this, chefs, because there's a past and a present. Do we have a favorite past dish you've made and maybe something in the current portfolio that you also love? Um, if I think of the past, uh, one of the, my favorite dishes that, that I did was a few years ago, I actually took part of a cooking show mm -hmm. uh, in the UK called uh, Britain's Best Dish which uh, it took me all the way to win the actual uh, yes. so, and it was uh, and it was my very own version of a beef rossini um, it was a, a, a beef tornado uh, with uh, uh, foie gras ravioli 
and uh, yeah. Yeah, should have brought that to set. I'm like, I'm just so hungry. <laughs> I've been sitting here talking Sorry, about guys, the whole you know. time. <laughs> but there's nothing that we can try. <laughs> you keep asking. You know. <laughs> no, I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you the same question that I asked her earlier. How can a restaurant stay relevant? Because you know, it's a very competitive market here in Dewey and there's always something new coming up. Mm. How can someone maintain that level of me, come to me, still come here? Look, I think uh, it's, it goes back to, there's two factors here. Mm -hmm. You know, there is the innovation uh, factor, so whereby, you know, uh, like uh, Courtney was saying, you know, it's very chef driven. We chef, we come up with new ideas, new presentation and keep evolving new te uh, techniques. But there is also going back to the consistency factor, yeah. right? If you look at uh, some of, uh, you know, the restaurant that, you know, they have a legacy of their own here in UAE. Uh, let's mention uh, LPM, for example, yeah. right? The, the restaurant hasn't changed much. The menu, you know, although it might change uh, uh, with the season, but the style is the same, it hasn't changed much. But it's the experience that you get coming out of such an establishment that keeps on bringing back, right? And, uh, and you know that you go, you go for an, you know, an LPM just as well as when you come to our restaurant, like the Artisan, yeah. for example. It's the experience from the moment you are welcoming, you are uh, escorted to your uh, table, to the moment, you know, you, you, we bid farewell to you. I like I mean, that. I'm daydreaming about the food right now. <laughs> Luigi, we didn't ask you just really quickly. Are you going to Gulf food? Absolutely. I will be there yes, together. <laughs> together. I will be interviewing him. Yes, yes. Grazie, Luigi. And, Grazie mille. Uh, with your permission, Ahmed needs to put Courtney on the hot seat. So let's do that with DXP well, in 60. Okay, Courtney. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? I think. We have something called DXB in 60. Mm -hmm. We have 60 seconds on the clock just to know you better. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cue the clock right now okay. in three, two, one. If you weren't in the food industry, what would you be working in? I would still be writing somehow, communicating to people. Okay, I like that. And what is your motto in life and work? Whew, um, be prepared. Okay, and maybe a podcast that you recommend? Uh, I love How Did This Get Made? Okay, yes. and what is the most used app on your phone? Oh, it's Instagram, unfortunately. Instagram, you just go on and <laughs> checking recipes. I, the I'm whole looking time. for food, I'm posting food, I'm seeing what people are doing. And what is your favorite chef here in Dubai? Oh, if you can name one. I, hmm. <laughs> uh, I, do, I do love Chef Luigi, but I have like a, it's like a three way tie. So yeah. it's, um, it's uh, Gregoire, it's Himan Shu, and it's Chef Kelvin. Yes, and, and I'm sorry to all the other chefs. I love you. I just had to pick three. <laughs> okay, and maybe it's some of the top restaurants that you like? Oh, I've listed almost all of them, but it's, you know, it's just such like, a... Let's say like one that you one, just want people okay. to Okay, if you haven't been to Tresden Studio, you have to go to Tresden yeah. Studio. Okay, yeah. and why Dubai? Why Dubai? Why not Dubai? There's so much to do here. Um, I just really feel privileged to see where my career's gone, to meet all the chefs I've had, and to have experiences like this one. I love that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, yeah. Thank you to both of our guests today. Luigi, Thank wonderful you. to have you. Courtney, yes. I love you, woman. I love you too. Keep coming back to I will, our show. I will. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, it's time to check out our duo who's going to be playing us out. They are at the fridge at El Sirka, and we caught up with them. Let's check it out. Hi guys, we're Coalescence Duo. So I'm Chris and this is Chelsea. We've known each other for over 10 years now and we're actually engaged to be married. So uh, how lucky am I that I get to perform music with my favorite person in the world? <laughs> um, yeah, what about our influences? We've, we've kind of got a very varied in interest in music and I sort of started playing some heavy rock and Chelsea started singing some power ballads when we were all younger. <laughs> and then uh, we happened to meet through a mutual friend and started to create some of our own music through, uh, you know, our love and life together. Jeez. Don't go anywhere. We're going to perform right after this. <laughs> 